So Carlo is just great to see your vineyards on Sonoma Coast and um, really impressive. You can really see how the forest and the, the different exposures and in the, um, I would call it mountains, it's not really hillsides, yeah. um, really affects the wines. And maybe you can talk a little bit that, about that and then also move on to when you were describing um, the different characteristics of uh, the vintages. Yeah, no, I think, uh, and, and thanks for coming out, James. It's yeah. amazing to be able to show these super special spots. Um, so the, the site's so rocky, I think you described it perfectly. It's more mountainous than, than hillside. There's so much rock and um, these sites, the geology, that just well-drained rock um, and, and site and hillside slope um, leads to wines of incredible expression. And I think one of the one of the culminations is that plus the microflora of the vineyard, the site, so those beautiful trees, the flowers, the grasses, um, all that, even the dirt that, that comes up and comes into contact to, with the vines and the clusters during that kind of final um, weeks of, of their evolution on the vine. And then we have this beautiful coast here that just creates this incredible environment. Um, one of the so it's fog, you can't see. <laughs> yeah, one of the, yeah <laughs> unfortunately, and, and we love the fog. Um, and, and it really just creates such a combination of, of great geology, site, and microflora, which I think um, for me um, leads to wines of incredible expression. And, and how, how do you just, because also you like to talk, compare to Burgundy, but I mean, it's nothing like Burgundy. All roads lead back to Burgundy. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I think Burgundy is so exceptional and so special. Um, it's taught me so much, informed so much, even for my father and my grandfather, um, or, or Piemonte or some of these sites that just have, you can really see the terroir because there's so many expressions within like a small vineyard like Richborg, where there's several producers creating something super special and with different lenses throughout that on pick decisions and how they farm it and all that. Um, but no, I, I yeah, well, you know, this is, this is very much California terroir and we're very proud of this. This was something my grandfather said back in uh, the sixties when he began Robert Mondavi he said, we're not Burgundy, we're not Bordeaux, we're not Champagne. This is California. We should be very proud of our terroir, but also honor um, the history of where uh, we come from, where these wines come from in terms of the genetic material. Um, and so uh, it's incredible to see just, and I like to, I always love to comparatively because I, I do love Burgundy so much um, and competitive, compare, um, but also see the differences and the nuance of, of sight and what makes sight so unique and special. And, and that is um, how it's expressed for me in, in wine in many ways. So, Do you um, think that Burgundy lovers uh, can make the step to, um, to Sonoma Coast, to your wines? Uh, yeah, I think that, I think that, you know, I think we're seeing that a bit um, and we've seen that, uh, you know, in wine that, that people realize that there's other places that can, other sites that can sit in the company of the great wines of the world. And um, so I think, but, and, and, and honor, and I guess, um, what's the best way to say, respect and love the diversity of, of wine. And so um, we've seen that a bit with, with Napa Valley, with some of the producers, we've seen that a bit um, even down in Santa Barbara and up in Oregon and, you know, even here in, in Carneros and, you know, with Aubert de Valen with his project there with Larry Hyde. Um, so yeah, I think there's definitely the love of, of seeing what, um, you know, different sites can do. Um, and why. Is there big, uh, is there big vintage variation on the coast more than let's say in Napa or uh, in other parts of Sonoma, like Russian River? I th well, we definitely are out on the extreme coast where um, but I think that it's, it's just it's, it's slightly different, but it's not any different than like if you have a very bad set in Napa with a very, you know, right now, for example, it's it's 2022. Um, we had one of the wettest Decembers followed by one of the driest Januaries and Februaries. Um, and that's throughout this whole area. Um, I'd say just Northern California as a whole. And so Napa is going to see it and it's going to express itself that way in Napa. Kind of inland Sonoma is going to see it and it's going to express itself that way and we're all going to see it. I don't, I do think though that like depending on when you prune and and kind of how you treat your vineyard, if poor, if I get poor set because I prune 10 days before my neighbor, they might not have as poor set because they prune 10 days later because then the weather. So it all is so dependent on the micro. I, I think it really gets down to like 
uh, that microclimate, not by microclimate is like in Sonoma or, or Russian River or down to the microclimate of, you know, like my vineyard over here versus over there. So, um, yeah, it's a good question though. Um, but I think that we are more extreme, um, but we've, we've, it, it's become normal, right? What happens for us is here and if that makes sense. Yes, yeah, <laughs> because you, I mean, how many years have, been, have you been um, great farming here? 2013 was our first vintage at Rain, and um, we've been here, coming out here, exploring not just um, where we are with Rain, but our neighbors' wines. We, Dante and I, f- <clears throat> fell in love with this area. My father, my my family, we love this whole area. I grew up surfing out here, and uh, the wines that come from this area are amazing. We were looking for about a decade before, um, and so no, it's it's nice to finally actually be here for the last, you know, what is that, eight years or so. Um, and, and also you've really evolved in your winemaking too, moving towards more on um, whole cluster fermentations. Um, yeah. And I think this, the, like the character of your wines are much more pure now. Like what, what was that about moving towards whole bunch? I think it's a cluster. journey of, <clears throat> cause I, I think whole cluster is not suited for all sites, um, not suited for all vintages. Um, and so first was getting to know the farm really well and understand the farming. And then from the farming, it was just doing experiments and seeing um, what we thought did better in that site. And every time that we destemmed, we kind of regretted it. And um, and so even now, if we have, I mean, we've been fortunate to have really uh, good vintages, but in vintages where there might be more rot or, you know, something challenging that, that the fruit of that year bird damage or whatever um we would destem those lots right um but if it's if the fruit is great so on great vintages we tend to be like 100 percent whole cluster or like north but almost always north of 75 percent. and it's not because of we, we love just this kind of aromatic lift it's the rose petal the tea that that kind of vibrancy that you get from whole bunches that we quite love um and so it's just it's, it's been an evolution though, you're right, like 13, we were like half whole bunches kind of experimenting, um, uh, 14, um, similarly, 15, we moved to about 75% and then we've been north of 75% ever since then um, and, and haven't looked back. But it definitely, hillsides, well-drained sites, um, we wanted to make sure that the stems the, the, that were, were mature, if you will, um, at harvest and that it would benefit and lift and do the lift that we love to see in great whole, whole bunch wines. And your, and your Chardonnay, your Chardonnay is equally um, impressive. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah, it's, we're a Pinot Noir domain, as you know, first, uh, the Chardonnay was, was a friends and family bottling in the beginning. And now we, um, you know, we uh, have a little bit that we, we dull about, but, um, it, it's it's a special special vineyard again it comes all down to the site first uh, how that site's honored and um you know, we feel real blessed and honored to be able to, to make this wine um yeah old old vines some of the oldest plantings of chardonnay here on the coast um pre phylloxera planting planted like both axr and st george so um it's interesting to see how it, it coexists with you know phylloxera in the soils and, and whatnot so the phylloxera is in there at the base, there's there's phylloxera there at the base, um, and that's also at the base is where there's more clay and where there's and you can see it kind of affecting those vines. Um, but where where we are, uh, it's much rockier, um, so uh, the vines tend to do a lot better. Um, and you're you know it's there, but it's not causing any challenges, uh, uh, or the challenges that I should say it is causing um, is leading to wines that we really love. And so then in vintages. Like uh, we're gonna taste, two, we're gonna taste the uh, sixteen, nineteen, twenty, and also some barrel samples of twenty-one. Yeah. What's the what's the stoke? We know that nineteen fantastic year for Sonoma, well, all over California. The sixteen was also excellent. Twenty was difficult because of the um, the fires. Yeah. And how was twenty-one? Twenty-one. Um, I. I for me, like the recent standouts are 21 and, and, and 19. Um, 21 was an exceptional vintage, um, a beautiful vintage, similar to 19 in the sense that um, made wines of, of depth. Uh, you know, 18 was, was a, a wine of, uh, you know, in August and September, it was so cool. It retained acidity. Sugar accumulation was very slow. So 
incredible classic vintage that I really love. Um, and we also have some some 17, um, which I wanted to show what a vintage like 2020 uh, might look like with a little bit of time. Uh, 2020, we uh, you know we thought that the pandemic was going to be the thing that derailed us, and then it was uh, the wildfires. And um, so there hasn't been a vintage where um, we had that kind of heat like we saw in in, in like 2017 and 2020. August was very warm, warm and I think has led to some rustic tannins or some, some robust tannins, which I think in 17 we'll see has, has evolved um, nicely. In 17, um, we had that the record heat wave that came in August that led to wildfires later on. Yeah. We were already in barrel, that's how late um, yeah. or how early I should say we butt out set and ripen. Um, so we had already not only fermented, but we also had drained and pressed that it was in Italy and came back. And that was when the fires began. That was 2017. Um, and it's neat to see how they've evolved. So we have uh, some 17s as well. 2020, um, on the other hand, um, we were getting to that point. We were just starting to pick. We had picked uh, a number of our vineyards and then a couple fires um, set off. And uh, we raced to grab everything that we could. We're way out here on the ocean. So we have this backdrop of fresh air. We were able to pick a bit, but we lost 60% of our crop. Um, we kind of threw the towel in once um, the Myers fire began and it was heartbreaking. But 2020, if you look from a farming perspective, everything we've been doing in permaculture and biodynamics and, and organics, it's really starting. It takes a long time for these things. I've talked like on Claude Lafleur would say you have to wait 15 years before you can see the, uh, the biodynamics in the vines. And... Um, the, the health, right? The balance. Of my French <laughs> shouldn't shouldn't read really that. And, but <laughs> but um, I understand what she says because uh, in 2020, the the fruit looked amazing. The vines were balanced. Everything was wonderful. And then um, you know we were only able to, we, we we picked 40 percent of what we we thought we had out there, and so it's a, a heartbreaker. Um, that was made up for. Um, well, very, very little to no wine in 2020, unfortunately, but the quality that we have, uh, I'm looking forward to you tasting that. Yeah. I really love and I'm really proud of what we have in 2020. Um, and then we had 2021, which was a great vintage and it let us see it all the way through. Wasn't it a small crop though because of um, bad um, set? Yeah, we, yeah. Set just set did, we, had, we had we had good set. Our oh, set, okay. we had, it, yeah. but we didn't have as many um, fruit positions, right? So there, there weren't, is, it wasn't as fruitful, I should say. Um, but the set was even for us. We've been fortunate with where we are um, that even in 15, we had poor set, but the poor set wasn't as bad as I saw um, in some other uh, vineyards. Um, but in 20, well, we did lose like half the crop that year, but it was it was drought related too. 2021 20, uh, drought related, shy yields for sure. Very shy okay. yields, but... but um, We'll take quality over quantity any day, yeah. and the quality was exceptional. And so we really love twenty one, um, and uh, yeah, it was a, and, and like you said, twenty nineteen, just a, kind of one of those really perfect great vintages. I think that if you look at nineteen, twenty, and twenty one, there's two standout vintages, and there's one vintage that is heartbreaking. <laughs> but well, let's uh, take some wine. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like I'm getting ready. <laughs> awesome.